This is about OctopusDB. My name is Jens Dittrich and this is joint work with Ale Kiendahl. I'll start by telling you three stories that motivated our work. Story number one. In 2002, I finished my PhD and joined SAP to work on data warehousing. The problem at the time was that some of the OLAP queries were running slowly, so we decided to build a column store. The column store solved the problem and the lesson I learned at the time was that for OLAP queries, you better use a column store, whereas for OLTP queries, you better use a row store. So for different workloads, you should use different database engines. And this observation can be summarized with a sentence, one size does not fit all. A sentence that was coined in the 90s by French and later on also discussed at the CIDR conferences. So I thought at the time that this is an interesting approach to have different database engines for different workloads. However, this approach has some issues. So the first issue is that you have to pay different software licenses, one software license for each database engine. And this costs a lot of money, of course. The second issue is that um, you have to hire DBAs, one DBA for each database engine, and that costs even more money. Another issue is that you have to provide the pipelines, pipelines pumping data from one database engine to another, and that costs even more money. So in summary, by keeping multiple database engines, you might be spending a lot of money. Story number two. In 2004, I joined ETH as a postdoc. And in one of my projects, I was working on moving objects, indexing moving objects. So in indexing moving objects, you want to index a position of uh, the zillions of cars that are driving around and then answer queries like, show me all the cars that are on a particular road segment currently. So in order to solve that problem, we invented a new method that was coined movies. So movies solved the problem and it was able to handle 60 million location updates every second. So, oh no, I, I'm sorry, I think location updates is the wrong term. I mean, I should rather be saying, um, yes, uh, inserts. Yeah, it was like OLTP style processing. So like the transactions of the location updates coming in. So uh, I know, uh, uh, sorry, sorry uh, no. if you think about that, actually, uh, I should be talking about events. Huh? I mean, this was like a data stream system, an unbounded stream of events that's delivered uh, and, and that's being handled. Huh? So you get the message. I was really wondering, so is this an OLTP style engine or data stream engine that, that you would use to implement a moving objects system? Huh? And what happens if you add analytics? So assume you also want to support queries like, show me all cars that used a particular road segment more than five times over the past seven months. Which type of engine would that be? Is it an OLTP engine, a data stream engine, or an OLAP engine? Some weird hybrid engine. And you, you might be arguing, okay, I mean, who cares about moving objects anyway? So what about business applications, yeah? TPC style stuff? So the customer enters and uh, says, oh, here's our workload. Enter the database architect and the database architect says, oh, no, no, this, this is two workloads. So how come the database architect says that this is two workloads? To understand this, we have to look at the brain of a database architect. And we observe that the brain is split into two parts. One part is responsible for the OLTP part and the other is responsible for the OLAP part. And the database architect can only perceive the world along those lines. So the customer would still say, man, this is just one workload. And here's an example why. Look at the simple query, find the top 5% employees and give them a raise. So finding the top 5% of employees is clearly an OLAP style query, whereas giving a raise boils down to doing some update operations. So the top part is OLAP and the lower part is OLTP. This is just a very simple example. There are much more complex examples, but a simple query like that already shows that there are queries that bridge these two worlds, OLAP and OLTP. So should we be talking about hybrid workloads? Or is it better to talk about something different? Should we rather be saying this is a real workload, a workload the customer sees?
what, what I learned, what I concluded is we should rather be talking about real workloads. Story number three. In 2008, I joined Saarland University as a professor. And as part of my duties, I had to teach. And in one of the database courses, I had to teach areas. So at that time, I had a conversation with a senior database guy, which went along the following lines. The senior database guy was saying, Arius is such a nice algorithm. And I replied, I don't like it. But why? Arius is so beautiful. Hmm, don't know, just don't like it. So I was wondering what was so irritating about the Arius algorithm that I didn't like, so I spent some thinking and did even some more thinking and eventually I found out what it was. It was this mix of logical and physical log records. So the logical log records saying what needs to be done whereas the physical log records say how it needs to be done. These before and after images keeping some snippet from the store, a byte sequence that is applied in the store. So this is mixing the what part with the how part what and how is mixed in the algorithm. I found that confusing because there's so many places in uh, databases where we try to really keep these two things strictly apart. Yeah? If you just think about logical query plans and physical query plans, yeah, that's also separating the what from the how. In areas, that's not the case. Th this has some problems, especially because the how part is carved in stone by the developer. That's part of the method, and it's very difficult to change the how part, change how something is represented in a particular store. So all these three stories. So the first story was a discussion on the different database engines. The th second was experience when trying to index moving objects. And the third, teaching areas, led to the development of OctopusDB. So OctopusDB is a one-size-fits-all database system and it's based on three ideas. The first has to do with the input and output of a database system and how we change the legs of the database system. The second idea has to do with so-called storage views that define how we store the data. And the third idea has to do with how to automate the decisions how to store the data. So, if you're interested in that, look at our papers, look at our work, or talk to us. We believe that following these three ideas, you can build a one-size-fits-all database system. Thank you. If you want to send me comments and feedback, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks.